Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry on my Donna Dewberry channel, whether you're on my Facebook right now, which is the Donna Dewberry's official one stroke group, or if you're on my Donna Dewberry YouTube channel. So here we are with my guest today is George Brooks, and he is the man with the most is when you see his surfaces and this beautiful finish. I did, well, we did together the part one of this, part one of this um, step that we're showing you is where I painted all this painting around this already resin glitter top. Now then this is gonna get a clear coat on top of this so it's just ready right away to put it on your table, do whatever you wanna do with it. And tell them about that one, George. This is a beautiful canvas that Donna has painted. We went ahead and put a backing board on there that up. and I'll show you how to do that later and we were able to protect this and put a nice plaid epoxy resin finish on here right. that's going to give you a beautiful beautiful look and just make your paintings pop look at the depth and color on these one stroke flowers you gotta hold it up yeah okay I apologize we have the godfather Mark Dewberry here <laughs> recording for us and we're down at the Groveland Cleveland Dewberry Art Center. Groveland Cleveland. <laughs> Groveland Cleveland, <laughs> Florida. I always get the two mixed up but look at that. This is just a beautiful beautiful piece now. This was a piece of pine wood and what we're going to do today is show you how to make the glitter boards. We'll get into all the other backgrounds that you can do and the things that you're uh, able to do with the one stroke painting as well as with the plaid folk art paint and the plaid epoxy resin. Okay, so what I want to tell you is that George, the most things, the, the most asked questions were, how do you get that glitter to look like that on that board? And what do you do? So I said, George, what we need to do is do the steps of getting the glitter board to a glitter board. We've got paint that we've used, a folk art multi-surface paint. And this was a teal then. We started on this side doing what he's going to share with you today. And then many, many, many of you want to learn how to do the resin quick and easy right at home. And that's what we're going to do. So before I get a little bit of housekeeping, I want to tell you at the beginning, most of you are saying already blowing up my, my um, message board about how do I find the resin? What do I do? If you're a YouTube follower, you go to onestroke.com all spelled out onestroke.com. That's where you get everything I show you on YouTube. All right. If you are on Facebook right now on like Donna Dewberry's official one stroke group on that Facebook group, we always have lives where you just post what you want and the message. And, and if we don't know your email, you have to, we'll email you, we'll message you back to give us your email. Okay. But that's where you put what you want to purchase. Okay. And so, is that a good start? That's perfect. Okay, so George is going to start sharing some other pictures with you, and I'm going to go and start video because Mark would really like me to take over so I can get up and down and show the details of what George is doing. And I'll be talking along the way because I always do. <laughs> All right, and let us know if you like this. It's very important that you um, let us know what you like about it, what you want to see, if you want to see more, because we have lots in store for the future, okay? Thank you. So, come on, George, let's start. All right, thank you very much, and I love to be here. And one of the things that I'm going to show you while Donna comes around and grabs that camera is you get her background courses and things, and you can go ahead and paint this. And then we're going to do the clear epoxy again over top of her canvases that was a youtube class i did right there george this painting with oh, the one stroke advantage yes that was the class and then george came in look at how it pops all right isn't that great i'm going to pull it a little bit down so you can see better all right so see how it brings out the vivid colors come a little bit closer if you want see all righty okay and then you're you going to show in the one behind you too i thought um this one, yeah, that's a beautiful paint. And the, and the thing that I want you to notice about it is with these worksheets, you're going to get that repeat quality. So what, what you're talking about, George, all right, keep that tilted down because the overheads are, yeah. So look at the back one. 
show them the back one. So that is one of my packets. And so it's a how-to packet, step-by-step, -step, shows you everything on how to do that. And then this was a workshop I did over the, all right, so you have to go back with it so they can see a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right, there. Good? Yeah, keep it tilted towards me a little bit, the there top. Yeah. All right, pull it down, and then they can see all that great color. Now, if you come close, let them see the bright, vivid colors, and then go down. Yeah, there you go. See all the vivid colors? So that's the wow, and so let's get started. Okay, all right, let's make this glitter board. We're going to take the thinner one of the plaid epoxy resin and the hardener and the glitter but i'm going to mix the glitter into this part of the resin first so that i can get a good mix so it's getting ready but then you have to prep your board first oh <laughs> i'm sorry the very first thing we did was use the folk art paint what color that's do you remember that's magenta that's the magenta how many coats two until you until it's covered and really let that thing dry and this is one of Donna's um, 10 by 20s 10 by 20s canvas boards we have it balanced on two rolls of tape because of the equal size go ahead and and when it's dripping you don't want it to tip correct and and um, that's why you're gonna level it for us yep and um, so get that on there hit it with a level that's good. Looks good. All right. Sorry about that. Now let's talk about the resin. Okay. We've got a box here. That's, uh, remember, all these resins, guys, are on our site. So if you want to order it, it's a step one and step two. These are the four ounce each, which is an eight ounce package. All right. And then the next size, and this package will cover that only. Or you could put a few coasters, maybe. I don't know. But then what George is going to do now, George, is what sizes are these? Those are the 16-ounce This set, is 16-ounce combo. Which is how much? Eight each? ounces of hardener and eight ounces of resin. This is a one-to-one -one product, so you want to use equal amounts to... Uh, which is the hardener? The hardener... Is number one? Is number two. Okay, good. There's so many different numbers with these things, so it's confusing. The reason why I started with the hardener is the resin is thicker. And what I want to do is I want to add some glitter into this. So I have, you know, almost about eight ounces there. So that's not bad. And I'm going to add some glitter to the thinner part. What kind part. of glitter? Powdered glitter. You okay. want to use powdered glitter, not loose. gel. Loose, we call it loose glitter. Loose glitter. So let's go ahead and pour I mean, some I went to Michael's and got that, but it's at Hobby Lobby and other places. Oop, let me show okay now the reason like i said i started with the looser one is so i can get this working there really good yes before i add the hard the uh, the resin to this hardener now that's really fine and you use bigger on the other one so do you just have to put more i'm going to put a little bit more in there but i wanted to check and see what i was dealing with here because so i liked what you said about the stick yeah, you don't want to be able to see the stick through. You want to see lots of glitter? Yeah. Let's really powder this up. That's that's looking pretty good. Now we so can this, always add more. I don't think this smells bad either. I hardly smell anything. All right, so then the hardener. Now I'm going to add the resin, which oh, was resin. the number one. Okay, number one is the resin. Yeah, and then this is, after you add this, is when you have to stir it up for uh, two minutes with the plaid epoxy. Now, what people ask me, I was just going to say this while we're, we're talking. Uh, they asked about a kitchen counter or outdoor you know, picnic area, porch on your patio. Um, tell them the difference in this um, this resin with plaid, which is a craft, more of a craft resin. Correct. For smaller projects and stuff. That is correct. If you wanna use something where you're gonna be putting it outdoors or on your kitchen counters or something like that, you need a more industrial 
resin and also gives you bigger containers. Right, and it's gonna set up slower and gives you more time to work with it. The, but uh, The important parts that you wanna sh share it with them with the bubbles and stuff. But mm. this one down here, I was gonna show you that big round tabletop down there makes a nice um, cocktail table or end table, outdoors or indoors. Okay, now you wanna stir this up and when you stir it, make sure you're scraping the sides of this, scrape your stick, make sure that you hear it, hear that. I'm scraping the bottom and I'm whipping it. A lot of people don't like to stir it rough because it adds air bubbles, but we're gonna take care of those air bubbles with heat. And I'm spreading this out with my hand. This ought to look nice. So two minutes, right? Yeah, I think that's good. All right. So we use multi-surface, folk art multi-surface, two coats or more of the magenta. We're using the larger containers, but see, you're using all that? Yeah. I wanted to make sure I had enough. Okay. All right, so you want to start this pour and walk it over. Now, some people would stop and spread that out, but I want to make sure I have enough and we'll leave it there because I might have to drip some on the corners. And you have regular gloves on? Yes, ma'am. Don't just stick your hand in there and push it. You know, don't do that. You want to glide it. I've seen you do that. That's pretty cool. Just let you glide this and spread it around. Because it self levels, is that what you said? Yes. I'm gonna add a little bit more on here. Now you see that, um, I don't know if we said this already, but George has put just a light thin coat of um, tablecloth on here. And it's on top of my regular tablecloth, plastic tablecloth. But this is a thin layer so that when these drips are there, we can roll it up and throw it away at the end. I like to make sure I got a lot on my corners. This is gonna be beautiful. I can tell that already. There you go. Now this is a, pan, a board that you could even frame. So, but just imagine that this is wrapping over the big round um, tabletop, his glitter tabletop that he made. So I want you to see, uh, also you can talk about those drips a little bit. Yeah, when Boy. those drips come down, I wanna get some heat on this. Before you take this glove off, give it a look around and make sure you've got it on all your edges that you don't have any big open spots and that you've spread this around fairly evenly. Okay, and I just want you to see, this has been here for a few hours, this one. And see, and all the colors come out beautifully. Okay. All right, now we're using a... Uh, you gotta start with that and share that with them. Okay, you can use this on your smaller projects. And see that, what is that? It's a heat pan. This is a heat pan. It's our plaid heat pan. And if you have coasters or something small, see, you can see it kind of getting out. What are we getting out? We're getting out air bubbles. Air bubbles. So George has done a small canvas with this and other projects, but he really likes to go to the next next one. Um, he's used a big torch on a big surfboard, but show me what we do with that other, tell me what that other container that other this one's working fine for this but if i wanted to go because i got a larger space to cover see that would have been perfect for a coaster okay because i have a larger space to cover i'm going to use this benzene when you go to fill this you hold this upside down and press that in and you want to do that before you start anything so that any kind of overspray or drips or whatever are evaporated before you use it and set that aside We've already filled this up, follow all of the instructions, and there's videos that you can watch on how to use this this tool. Now these tools, are they the, like the ones we do cream brulee and stuff? Correct, and, and the cookies. steaks, all that. Now so see tell these. tell about the flame first, so we didn't know. Okay, see all these bubbles? That's what we're gonna get rid of. Okay, you'll see the flame out to about here, but it's really out to about here. So you're talking, you know, maybe three four inches. Fingers, yeah. Yeah. So you want to be about four inches to six inches away. Don't go down here. Don't be way up here. See, I think you can see that flame. See it touching. And you see it evaporating. 
Now, I thought that flame would melt the tablecloth when you did this. That's you should it. go with a little bit heavier plastic. Yeah, but it didn't melt it, and that worried me the whole time George was doing it. I was thinking, oh, we're gonna have a fire in here. You see how that's the difference between here and here? Yeah. This is still foggy. This is nice and, cr and clear. <laughs> That's because we're removing these air bubbles. Donald Dewberry, I'm so happy to be here with you. <laughs> it's nice to have you as my guest here and and sharing all your talent. And next Wednesday, um, Amanda and um, Amanda Dewberry, my daughter, and George are going to cover some of the paintings I've done, um, the glitter tops, and show you how to seal another coat on top of there. And Amanda's going to show you her... Look at that. Um, isn't that beautiful? Her. High five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give me five. And then listen. <laughs> this is very important. I don't mean to interrupt you. Now, you saw that flash off. You want to get down here about eye level when you're doing this and walk that thing around. Don't go real fast. Don't go real slow. Don't go real deep. Don't stay real high. Now, you know what I would think about this? I what? think, look at all that uh, resin you wasted. So I It's not, because if I had a bare spot, yeah, you could I grab could come it. in here and drip that, you know, right back on there. Okay, so I want to show you over here. This one, see, I'm going to strip off that one. This one, George did, there we go. It's got so much glitter in it that you can't even really okay, see Okay, he did this one, the whole one, with the smaller box. All right, that but I threw out. in so much glitter that it's... Yeah, he did that one with one and two, four ounces each, which is an eight ounce box. All right, and so you can get more. You could have put some of that more on something else also, right? You could have made a custard, but I would rather have a beautiful panel. Now, this is finer glitter. This yeah. is finer glitter, which is fun too. So we're going to see both options when we paint on it later. But I would rather have these results than be worried that I don't have enough. And a lot of people say, what made you start wanting to make these glitter backgrounds? And it was because I couldn't paint a background. It well, wasn't- You didn't know them yet. Now you do know yeah, that you're now certified. now I can paint a background. Okay, now you guys saw some of the stuff. One George, more run. George's gonna do run. more run before we go. Just to make sure. And he just likes to get more of the bubbles if there are any air bubbles in there. And like he said, that comes when you whip it with a stick for a few, a couple of minutes. But um, you see little blemishes, what he taught me was when there was a little blemish that a hair landed or something that he just, what'd you do to it? What ha This is metallic. Now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put a clear coat of the epoxy, plaid epoxy resin on top of this. Now, yeah, if you had a hair or, yeah if you had a hair or something like that in it and it's in there blemish whatever it'll be in the it, it don't worry about it because you can give it a little uh clear coat and now you're not getting back down into the metallics if you have any kind of imperfection when you paint yeah if something's right there in the middle of it even in there don't worry because you're going to paint your beautiful projects your one stroke projects right over top of that yeah but look at the finish it's beautiful isn't that nice yeah See, it's really pretty. George, thank you so much. You're so very welcome, Donna. <laughs> and I'm really right. happy to be here with you. Thanks, guys.